Now what we're seeing is a, is a chemical change in the structure of the protein of the milk. And the, the protein uh, in the milk is mainly casein, and that's what's making up the curd here. And under normal circumstances, uh, the casein has a lot of uh, calcium in it, which makes the protein very firm and makes the cheese very firm. But under certain circumstances, that is, when the pH is between 5.3 and the temperature is above 50 degrees Celsius, which it is now, um, the calcium disappears from the casein. And the cheese goes from a solid to a liquid. It just loses its form. It turns perfectly plastic. And while the cheese has lost its calcium, when it's still hot and acidic, you can stretch it into all these shapes. You can make your mozzarella. And then cool it off in the brine. Now when the temperature drops, the calcium comes back into the casing, the cheese turns firm again, and it keeps that beautiful shape that you've given it. It's just right. It just does this. It's amazing. But keep in mind, you know, goat's milk doesn't do this. So I can't eat mozzarella. And the cow's milk works this way. Oh, you did this then. <laughs> Sorry. You have to oh. get a cow. You can make much better lactic cheeses than someone who has cow's milk. That's the consolation. <laughs> okay, if you want to make goat's milk mozzarella, you have to mix it half and half with cow. Another thing to understand is that over-processed milk doesn't do this either. The milk should be raw to do this. And if you are using pasteurized milk, you absolutely have to use low temperature pasteurized milk if you want the cheese to stretch. Mm. If you use too high temperature processed milk, you will not get this stretch. But high temperature processing ruins milk's proteins and uh, 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 destroys the ability of the curd to respond in this way. Okay. I'm taking a piece of curd off in my hand, like stretching it in my hand, and then uh, folding it on itself a little bit, and then stretching the skin over top to create a tight skin, and then I'm closing it off between my thumb and forefinger, breaking it off, pulling it off as I do so on the mask below. It's, it's a complicated maneuver to master, and you sh shouldn't expect you to, to get it the first time. And then I break it off, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm breaking it off with my thumb. It's hot, which gives you a little bit more pressure.